I think we can agree that if we go out on the street and ask people what they'd most like out of life, at least a good percentage of them are going to say, I want to be happy. <laughs> it's amazing when you think, with so many people trying to be happy, why is there so much unhappiness, so much discontent, so many people upset with life, so many Christians unblessed, if you will. And the book of Ecclesiastes holds a really interesting, wonderful, and profound key about happiness. It's in Ecclesiastes chapter 11, verse 3. And here's what it says. If the clouds are full of water, they pour rain upon the earth. Whether the tree falls to the south or to the north, in the place where it falls, there it will lie. And you're probably saying, okay, what? <laughs> What's that got to do with happiness? Now listen to this. If the, if the clouds are full of water, it's going to rain. If you, if you cut a tree down, if it falls to the north or to the south, in the place where it falls, that's where it is. What's this verse teaching us? This verse is teaching us that we've got to deal with life the way it is. So many times the reason we're upset, so many times the reason we complain is because honestly, we just wish things were different than they were. We're just not happy with the way things are. And then somehow or other, we get into this idea. I'm not actually sure. Does it come from the environment, from our parents? I'm not sure where if things aren't the way we want them to be, then we just complain. <laughs> but you know, really complaining doesn't help. This verse about the tree, it really speaks to me because I supplement my heat in the winter with, with wood burning a wood-burning stove. And between the dead trees on my property and then I have access to some adjacent property where I can cut down some trees. I've been in this position where, you know, you've, you've got this idea, okay, I'm going to cut this tree down, it's going to fall that way, and then it's going to be real easy to cut up and harvest and load into the pickup truck, and, and you get this on, on the thing and it goes and falls down the hill or something and you're, ah! And, and at that point, where the tree falls, that's where it is. You know, I can run down the bank and cuss and kick the tree. And, and you know what good that does? None. Not one bit. The tree is, is still laying exactly where it was. And so much of our being content, our being blessed in life, is just learning to deal with things where they are. Now let's take a couple scenarios. Here's a family, mom, dad, couple kids driving down the road. In this scenario, dad's driving, mom's riding shotgun, kids are in the back seat, car has a flat tire. Oh, the dad's furious, can't believe it. You know, he's, he's mad, he starts yelling at the car, more or less. The, the wife, who in this particular case might think that this is half your fault for not checking the tires to begin with, she starts to say some unkind things to him. They start into a fight, the kids are crying, he gets out of the car, he slams the door, he, he goes around, he's cussing up a blue streak, he kicks the tires, he throws open the hood of the car, or the trunk of the car to get the jack, you know. And, for all of this fuming and fussing and, and real genuine unhappiness, in 20 minutes the tires changed. You have another scenario and got a family driving down the road and they have a flat tire and the father's like, oh, I can't believe we got a flat tire now. Okay, well thank God we didn't have a blowout. Everybody's safe, everybody feel good. Okay, you know, well let's, let's just pray for everybody's safety as I change this tire. The dad gets out of the car, the, the wife is supportive, they're, they're not, gosh, it's not Pollyanna, we're not just blessed that we had a flat tire, it's not we're thankful that things went wrong, but there's an understanding that I can breathe through the emotion and find things in life to be thankful for. Then the dad gets out, if the mom, with the mom's help or whatever, I know modern culture and all, and, and, the, and the tire gets changed, and 20 minutes later, they're back in the, uh, in the car and on the road. So, both ways took 20 minutes. <laughs> it took 20 minutes. If you got out, you cussed, you fumed, you fought, you kicked the car, you know, the kids are crying, it's still 20 minutes. Or you can get out and you can deal. And it's still 20 minutes. Yesterday morning, you know, my wife's busy, I'm, I'm making breakfast, and I drop the bowl of pancake batter. <laughs> you, know, you know what it's like when you drop a bowl of batter? <clears throat> you know, there's batter splattered everywhere, all, you know, all over the floor, cabinets and stuff like that. You know, 
And that's a real opportunity. Again, God doesn't, it's not like God expects us to say, well, I'm super blessed that I dropped the batter. That's not it. But the other side of the coin is, it is what it is. And, and we've got to learn to deal with life the way it is. Now, we're emotional beings. Remember that Genesis tells us that we're created in God's image. Let's think about that a second. We're created in God image, God's image. Read the Bible? You ever seen God angry? Sure, my goodness, people do bonehead things on earth. God gets mad up in heaven, but then there are other things going on. It talks in Matthew about, about heaven's rejoicing. God's an emotional God, and when he created us, he created us in his image. And that means when things happen on earth, emotions are going to come up in us. But are we going to let them dictate whether we're, whether we're overall, whether we're thankful or not? You know, Colossians chapter 3.15 has an imperative. It says, and be thankful. That's the command of the Lord. It's not a suggestion or perhaps a good idea. That's, <laughs> that's a command of God. And be thankful. Okay, so I dropped the pancake batter. Now, I'm not thankful I dropped the batter. And the emotions are going to flush up. And then you, you deal with the emotion. You know, we've got to get honest about the fact that what's life like anyway? I mean, you go all the way back to the Garden of Eden because life's been like this for 6,000 years. All the way back to the Garden of Eden, Genesis chapter 3, verse 17. God speaks to Adam. He says, because you listened to your wife and ate from the tree about which I commanded you, you must not eat of it. That's the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Cursed is the ground because of you. Watch this. Through painful toil, you will eat of it all the days of your life. That's the word of God. God said, you know what life's going to be like? It's going to be tough. You know how tough it's going to be? It's going to be painful. There's going to be painful work through your whole life. Guess what? 6,000 years ago and 6,000 years of human history, and what do we see? We see that verse is exactly correct. Life involves painful toil. It does. We, we need to know, you know, this ahead of time. Okay, so I dropped the pancake batter. So there's pancake batter all over the kitchen. So it's going to take me some time to clean it up. See, I can cuss, kick a cabinet or two, throw things around the kitchen, and you know what? In five minutes, it's going to be cleaned up. Or I can take a deep breath, take my thoughts captive, be thankful that there's still enough pancake batter in the bowl to make some pancakes, which, by the way, I did. Went ahead and, and rounded up the rest of the batter and made some absolutely fabulous pancakes, if I do say so myself. And, and, and you still, you, you can deal with life. You know, over here in Corinthians, in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, great verse. 2 Corinthians 10.5 says, We demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God, and we take captive every thought. Oh sure, is there a temptation when you drop the, the batter on the floor? Is, is there a temptation that flushes up in you, you know, to be all mad and kick a cabinet or two? Sure. And what's the scripture say to do? Take captive every thought. So you, you drop the batter, and by the way, <laughs> thankfully, this gets easier and easier and easier as you practice it. You know, you drop the batter and you go, Okay, I drop the batter, you take a couple deep breaths, you bring your thoughts captive, you say, what's there to be blessed about in this situation? What's there to be thankful for in this situation? You look toward the positive side. This takes training, it takes renewing of the mind, but it's doable. We can do this, we can live like this. Again, you go out on the street, you ask people what they want. They want to be happy. The Bible has keys for being happy, but we've got to act on them. We've got to live them. And one of those great keys, the Bible says, you know, if the tree falls to the south or it falls to the north, where it fell, that's where it is. And all your wishing and wanting and complaining and cussing and kicking and fuming to make it different isn't going to change anything. But what will change the situation is if we look for the positive and then do what Colossians commands us to do, be thankful. So let's take life situation, take what life serves us up and figure out how to be thankful in it and obey God.